This is a video showing you a Turing machine that does addition. I'm Chandra Sripada. Turing machines capture the fundamental units of computation. Um, Turing machines, all they do is maintain a tape, maintain a finite list of symbols, they read, write, erase the symbols, maintain a state memory, and follow simple instructions. And yet, despite being so simple, Turing machines are, in an important sense, maximally powerful. If a function is computable, then a Turing machine can compute it. Or put another way, if there is an algorithm for calculating a function, where an algorithm is an unintelligent mechanical procedure, if such an algorithm exists for a function, then a Turing machine can compute that function. It's hard, though, to see exactly how a Turing machine even does anything. So here's an example that can make vivid how a Turing machine implements an algorithm. This Turing machine, I claim, does addition. And here is the Turing machine's tape. The Turing machine, um, its symbols are 1, 0, and blank. The first number that gets added is listed here, and the code we are using is the quantity of ones represents the number, so this is three. The second number occurs after a blank, so that number is two. This area that holds the second number also doubles as our output area. So if this Turing machine is functioning correctly to do addition, then this area will eventually get populated, of course, with the quantity of five ones. Here is our state transition table, and let's use this table and walk through the steps of what the Turing machine does to see how it performs addition. The first thing the Turing machine does is it is in state S1 and it's reading uh, 1. And so this is the rule that gets matched. Since this is the rule that gets, this is the antecedent of the rule. Uh, since that's what, uh, th this is the rule that gets matched, we need to do these things. That is, we need to write a zero right there, move right, and change to S2. And that's what happens. Now, this is the rule that gets matched. We're in state S2, we read a 1, so now we need to do these things. And so I can go a little bit faster now, because I think you're getting the hang of, what, of how I'm going to use these rules. I stay in S2, and I still read a 1. Now I'm still in S2, but now I'm reading a blank. Now I've changed to S3, and I read a 1. I stay in S3, and I read a 1. Now I'm in S3, and I'm reading a blank. So here, I'm going to write a 1, and then move to the left, and change to S4. Here, I haven't matched any rules, because what I want to highlight is that this pair of rules will get matched repeatedly. I'll either read a 1 in S4 or read a blank in S4 all the way till I'm over here. And so I'm going to jump over there. So now I'm in S4 still, and I've read a 0. So what I do is I write a 0, move right, and change to S1. Notice I'm now back in a situation that's very similar to where I've, I started. I was in S1 and I was reading a 1. So you can kind of see a pattern developing here move to the right and change, I'm going to change that 1 to a 0 and move to the right. Now I'm in S2. I'm still in S2. I read a blank, so I change to S3, and I keep on going over until I read this blank. Now I'm going to write that 1, change to S4, and move left and change to S4. And here, remember the pair of rules that gets matched all the way till I go back to that 0 over there? So now I use those pair of rules repeatedly. I'm back in S4, and I've read a 0. Here, I'm going to write a 0, move right, and change to S1. Once again, I'm back into a situation like where I started, where I'm in S1, and I'm reading a 1. So I change that 1 to a 0, change to S2. After the blank, I change to S3. Now I'm moving right all the way until I get to this blank. Here, I write that 1, move left, and change to S4. Now, it's that pair of rules that I use to get all the way back to this 0. So now I'm in S4. I read that 0. So I write a 0, move right, and change to S1. But this time, there isn't a 1 above me. Instead, I'm reading a blank. That's my cue that I need to halt. And notice, at the point that I halt, 
the output is as we said it should be. There are five ones here. Okay, so let's take stock a little bit. Summing up, I started with this setup uh, of the tape. My first number was three, a quantity of three ones. My second uh, number was a quantity of two ones, so that's three and that's two. I used this state transition table, and this is where the output looked at the. This is how the output looked at the end. I have five ones, a quantity of five ones over here, so I've got the correct output of five. You can kind of reason for yourself that it didn't matter that I had three ones over here and two ones over there. I could have had a hundred ones over here and 1,500 ones over here. I would have gotten an output of 1,600, a quantity of 1,600 ones in the output as long as I follow this algorithm. So this really is an algorithm for addition and hopefully this clarifies the sense in which Turing machines are simple machines, um, and they can do things. They can implement algorithms. Hope that was fun and informative. Thank you very much.